Hello scientists, this is Miss R and I'm going to give you a brief overview of how to do lab 3.05 on vector addition. <clears throat> Make sure you watch the YouTube video here first. It will give you a big help in understanding what vectors are. We're going to go over how to use the simulation here, which you can reach by using this URL in the lab. Let's first just kind of explore the simulation to see what different aspects of the simulation do. First of all, you can grab a vector out of the sort of can of vectors. And you notice when you put the vector on the screen, you get the absolute value of the length of the vector or the magnitude of the vector. You get the angle the vector is pointing from east here and you get the x and y components of the vector. You notice there's no x component because the vector is not tilted here. If I tilt it, it will have a little bit of an x component and a y component and I'll explain a little bit more about that in a minute here. But if it's just going straight in an x or y direction, it will only have an x or y component. Notice we, when we turn it sideways, it only has an x component and doesn't have a y component. If we have a vector that's kind of between the x and y axis, it will have x and y components. Here, this is at a 45 degree angle, so it has equal x and y components. And will show you those components. You can see this is the x component and this is the y component and if you add them you get the vector. So all vectors can be described in terms of an x component and a y component which you'll see up here and you'll see the actual uh, component vectors here. And there are different ways you can show the component vectors you can show them on the x and y axis if in style 3. Style 2 gives you this. Style 1 gives you them uh, pointing them in different directions. I'm going to have none right now. If we have two vectors, say you go out for a walk, you're heading down this street, and then you take a turn and you head down another street in a different direction, uh, if the bird flies your route, it will have gone from here to here. The sum of two vectors is kind of like the bird route. If you add a vector tip to tail, and then draw from tail to tip, it will show you the total distance traveled and the direction that distance would be in. Total distance traveled if you went the shortest route. Okay, <clears throat> let's figure out what this means in terms of the lab. Let's clear all and go back and look at the first question in the lab. So in part two, question number one, we get some information about a vector. We get the magnitude of the vector, it's 15 steps, and we get a direction, it's 25 degrees north of east. So if we have these two pieces of information, the magnitude, which is 15 steps, that's the length of the vector, and the direction, which is 25 degrees north of east, we can represent <clears throat> that vector in our simulation. So let's grab a vector here. And let's use that information. <clears throat> We're going 25 degrees north of east, so east would be going in this direction on the, on the x-axis, the positive direction on the x-axis. So we want to go 25 degrees north of east. So we'll look here in our angle indicator, and we'll try to get close to 25 here. Okay, that's pretty close. Now, our magnitude of the vector was 15. So this is the total length of the vector. Remember, this is the length in the x direction and the length in the y direction. We want to look at this 
for this particular problem, we want to look at the total length, which is 15. So there we go, we're about 25 degrees. This is a pretty good representation of the vector in question one. So we've kind of gone over 1A, how would we use the simulation to represent your path? You need to think about B, why would the same representation work for driving 15 miles an hour in the same direction? And you need to think about another scenario using different units that could be re represented the same. Remember, to have a vector, you need to have a magnitude and a direction. So you need two things, a magnitude, the size, uh, how far you're going, or how fast you're going, and you need to know what direction. So if you're going to write a scenario, make sure you know how fast or how far and what direction. So for number two, a vector is described by four measurements. Those are at the top of the simulation. We're going to investigate what these four things represent. We've talked a little bit about them, um, but we're going to show grid and we're going to talk a little bit about the component displays. So here I have a vector that's pointed south or 90 degrees, negative 90 degrees from east. It doesn't have any components in the x direction because it's just along the y axis. And it has negative 11 on the y axis. It's going down, so the value here is negative. And the total magnitude of the vector is 11, just like we see here. Now, if we turn the vector, so it's not just in the x or just in the y, we're going to see that the total magnitude changes and that it has an x and a y component. This is, again is a 45 degree angle, so we've got equal x and y's. Let's show the component vectors here. It's got some x and some y. We show a different component vector. You can, the x and y vectors appear actually on the x and y axis, or that you can appear just at the tail. And if you want a grid so you can count them better, you can just click show grid here. But remember, the component displays show you the size of the x component, or how far the vector is going in the x direction, and how far the vector is going in the y direction, and what direction. Is it going up in the y direction, or in this case, it's negative, so it's going down. So for number three, Let's suppose you're driving 14 miles an hour, that's the magnitude of the vector, with a compass reading or direction of 35 degrees north of east. Let's represent the vector using the simulation and figure out the components of your speed. How fast is your car traveling in the north direction, that's the y direction, and in the east direction, that's the x direction. So I've represented our vector here. It's going 35 degrees north of east. East would be this. So the angle here I set to about 35 degrees. I can, couldn't get it quite exactly. And the magnitude of the vector is 14, so I got it to about 14. So this is a good approximation of what the vector is. Now let's figure out the components. We know that in the x direction, it's going 11 miles per hour. We can see that if we put the components on, and we can see that the x component is 11, and the y component is 8. In other words, if you wanted to go the same distance, but you could only drive in cardinal directions, you'd have to drive 11 miles this way and 8 miles this way. 
In part B of question three, it's our job to figure out how the components could be calculated using geometry if you are not allowed to use the simulation. So you need to actually do this, and I'll show you the geometry in just a second. So hopefully you all remember the Pythagorean theorem. The Pythagorean theorem says that c squared, the hypotenuse, is equal to the sum of a squared plus b squared. In this case, they're the component vectors. b squared and a squared are the component vectors. And so you can use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out the different components that add up to the hypotenuse. To just use the Pythagorean theorem, you need to know one of the components, the hypotenuse, and then you can find the other one. Otherwise, you have to use some fancy trigonometry, um, which we're not going to go over. But trust me, if you know the angles here, you can do some trigonometry, which you may have not covered in math yet, to figure out the distance of A, the length of A, and the length of B, the component vectors for a vector that is not in the X or Y direction, not solely in the X or Y direction. Okay, in four and five in the lab, we have a couple of questions that you can easily represent with vectors. Um, to get to the sandwich shop, you left home and drove six miles south. We have a magnitude and a direction, so that's a vector. And then 10 miles, that's the magnitude, west, that's the direction. So we have two vectors to represent here. And then we want to know if a bird flew from your house to the sandwich shop in a straight line, how far do you think the bird would fly? So we want to know basically how what happens when you add these two vectors. What's the distance a bird would take without going just cardinal directions like you might just be able to go on a street. When you're driving a car, you can only go on streets and generally streets follow cardinal directions. Birds have a little bit more freedom and they can travel any direction they want to. So I already put the first vector on here for problem number four. This is you drove six miles south. Then we want a vector that represents 10 miles in the west. So west would be directly this way. We want to connect it to our first vector since we're driving a continuous route here. I'm going to make it 10 miles since that's the magnitude. And then we want to know what would happen if a bird flew from the beginning of our trip to the end of the trip? Because birds can take shortcuts, they don't have to follow the street. So we can show the sum. And we can see that if a bird flew this way, it would have flown negative 10, negative 6. And the total length of the bird's trip would have been 11.7 miles. Question five is a lot like question four, so I'm going to let you do that one on your own. Question six, we've got two different vectors uh, in two different directions, and we want to know if there's a paper airplane plane that's flying at seven meters per second, 35 degrees of north, and then there's also a wind pushing on it that's eight meters per second, 15 north of east. What is the total uh, motion, total vector, the, the addition of the two vectors, the two forces pushing on the airplane add together to push it in a direction that's different than the original, than either of the independent vectors. So let's look at that in the simulation. Seven meters per second, 35 degrees, and eight meters per second, 15 degrees. So here we have the two vectors that were discussed in the problem. Here's the first vector, about 7 meters per second at about 35 degrees. I got it as close as I could. The second vector was, we'll click on it here, and it'll give us, uh, let's make that a little bit longer. It's supposed to be 8 meters a second. 
at 14 degree, 15 degrees. So we can add these two vectors by clicking Show Sum. We always add vectors, remember, tip to tail. We line up the two vectors we're adding, tip to tail, and then the resultant vector, the answer to the addition, the sum, is going to go from tail to tip. And you can see the sum vector here, I'll pull it away a little bit so you can see it better, is a total of about 15.2 and it has a direction of about 23. Now we could have come to the same conclusion by adding the component vectors here. You can see that this x component and this x component, they add up to the x component of the resultant vector. See this purple vector plus this purple x vector add up to this green x vector. Now let's look at the y components. You can see that this purple y component and this purple y component add up to the green y component of the resultant vector. This plus this equals the green y component here. So you can add two vectors by adding their component vectors, these x and y direction vectors. Just a hint for number six, part B. Um, you can use trigonometry, but if you don't know trigonometry, you can certainly just use vectors that are in the x and y direction and talk about how you would add those for six. And then you can check your design by adding several vectors that are just in the x direction or y direction. And you can insert a screenshot or talk about what you did or describe what you did. Part three is the wrap up. Let's just give you some ideas. How do vectors simplifying representing multiple forces? Remember when we just added the two different forces pushing on the airplane, we could figure out the sum of the vector by analyzing the component vectors of each of the two vectors we were adding. So if you look at the components of each vector and add the components, you can figure out uh, the sum of the vector. Um, you can also think about vectors going in opposite directions. If you're swimming at a velocity 2 meters per second north and the current is flowing south, those vectors are pointed in opposite directions. And use the simulation and you can try to figure out what they're going to add to. And the same for number three. You can use the simulation to model the problem and come to a conclusion. Make sure you put your lab in the Dropbox when you're finished. Thanks so much for watching. Have an excellent lab.